All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Today I want to talk to you about the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. And if you have a bulletin and want to follow us along, here's the outline. Number one, an outward look. An outward look. Number two, an inward look. And the inward look is where I want to focus today. We have to look at ourselves. Nobody else. Nobody in the room, nobody you live with, nobody you work with, you have to look at yourself today. And number three, an upward look. An upward look. You know, two ordinances of the church are baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, last week we got to see uh, water baptism and we praised, the God, we praised God for that. And then to follow it up with the Lord's Supper uh, this Sunday is just a true blessing. Both are extremely meaningful to a Christian. Uh, baptism is an act of obedience, and I believe with all my heart that the Lord's Supper is the highest expression and the holiest exercise of Christian worship. And I'll say this again, I believe with all my heart that the Lord's Supper is the highest expression and the holiest exercise of Christian worship. We should never take it for granted or take it lightly. Matter of fact, as I was growing up, uh, the church, and, and I'm not saying it's wrong, uh, but we did it every fifth Sunday, and uh, it, it seemed routine to me. And folks, people have asked me when we're going to do the Lord's Supper, and I always answer them when God tells me to do the Lord's Supper. I'm not just you know being stingy or saying it's my deal. I just feel like God will let me know when, and, and we praise God for when He does. Nobody is worthy of the Lord's Supper, but we should always try to partake of the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner. It is a memorial service to remind us of what Jesus did on the cross for us. His body was broken. His blood was shed for us. Jesus brought salvation to all who trust in Him. And today we want to look at the Lord's Supper. As we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we know Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. And, you know, to say that Corinth was an immature church would probably be an understatement. They had a lot of problems uh, there. And Paul uh, spends time, matter of fact, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, uh, addressing the church and the things that were going on in it. And uh, the church at Corinth obviously was doing things wrong about the Lord's Supper. And even as we look through this, uh, these things are not going on in our church, but we need to be a reminder that, yes, we need to prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, but we also need to live out Christianity every day of our lives. We may have this part down, in which I think many people do, but it spills over into our other life and lifestyle. So let's look at an outward look. And he is specifically talking to the church at Corinth, the church as a whole. Verse 17, now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. I would hate to think God thought we were worse off because we came together as a congregation. But church splits, church fights, arguing and backbiting, and, and no spirit, folks, it happens. And I thank God that that is not happening in our church. Verse 18, for first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you, and in part, I believe it. Folks, we should not, and, and you have to understand that, folks, Satan divides God unites. We can disagree on things. We are not going to agree on everything, but we need to disagree agreeably. We need to come together and to be able to talk things out, and this is very, very important. Matthew chapter 18 speaks of that. Verse 19, for there must also be factions among you uh, to those who are approved may be recognized among you. Factions it's what I call a clicks, all right, clicks. And those that are approved, 
And I really think he's addressing the rich and the poor here, as you'll see in just a second. Folks, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what you drive to church. It doesn't matter what house you live in. There's nothing wrong with having things as long as these things are surrendered to God. We are no better than anyone else. All right? We, we should come to the Lord's Supper as humble servants. Verse 20, therefore, when you come together in one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. And back then, the tradition was you ate a feast meal first, and then you partook of the Lord's Supper. Matter of fact, I'm kind of thinking this is where we get our potluck dinners. And if you're a Baptist, one is your preacher likes to eat. All right? So we're going to have potlucks. All right? But do not you know, get those two confused. A supper meal together, a what they called a love feast, was so that we could come together and have fellowship, and those who didn't have food, those who were hungry, could partake at that time. But it had nothing to do with the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. I can't imagine... I'm I'm just telling you, folks, it wouldn't happen. You come to church drunk, we're going to have a talk. I'm not going to throw you out, but I'm just saying, I can't imagine. My mind will not fathom that, folks. This is a holy place. This place you are. Folks, this is not an auditorium. It's a sanctuary. It's the place where God dwells. And again, I wouldn't throw someone out. I I would just kind of josh in there. I would really t- get them to the side and I would really try to help them to understand what they are doing to themselves. Verse 22, what? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? So you see these problems that are going on in the church. There is divisions. There is feast. Uh, and, and when it says feast, it literally means food there, okay? And, and there was probably some kind of hearsay and gossiping going on there. And then, of course, we know uh, what drunkenness is. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Folks, Paul is getting with the church. Paul is telling them, your lifestyle does not match up with the Word of God. And when we come into this place, and especially when we come to the Lord's Supper, we need to come and, you know, we need to come in reverence. We need to come in holiness. We need to come, uh, you know, uh, with a, a, a holy attitude in our hearts and lives. Ephesians chapter 4, hold your finger there and go to Ephesians 4. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus saying, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. And again, he's talking about Christians with all lowliness. That's humility. Folks, we need to come to the Lord's Supper with humility, with gentleness. Okay? That's that's being kind. That's being nice. Okay? It's not arrogance. It's gentleness. With long-suffering and patience. All right, these are characteristics that Jesus showed people around them. And these are characteristics that we need to have in our own Christian life. Bearing one another in love. Bearing one another. It's not putting up with one another. It's respecting one another. Even if we disagree on things, we still need to respect the person and, and, and be gentle with them. In love. Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus told his own disciples, people will know you by the love that you have for one another. We need to be friendly in what we do. We need to show people the love of Jesus and God in us. And here's the verse, verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. It's like our body life meetings when we have our business meetings. Folks, once the church makes the decision, our job as Christians is to agree. We may not agree with what the church 
uh, agreed with. But we need to go as a unit. And again, uh, you know, Paul is speaking of the importance of unity, and we need to have peace. Folks, peace uh, is so important, all right? Verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Folks, it's one body. We are the body of Christ. And especially during the time that we observe the Lord's Supper. I mean, it should happen all the time. And I feel like it does happen all the time. If there is a rift or something going on in the church, I really don't know about it. I don't know about it. And I'm glad I don't know about it. All right? It's not that I don't want to know. I'm simply saying God unites and Satan divides. So as we look at the Lord's Supper today, I thank God and I pray that you also will be united and in one accord with your holy Savior. The second thing, that's an outward look, but let's look at the inward look. The inward look. This is very, very important. An inward look. Skip down to verse 27. Verse 23, I will be sharing that during our Lord's Supper. But look at verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What's unworthy? There's several things that could be unworthy. One is with known sin in your life. We all sin. But folks, we need to confess our sins. 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's why I always have an invitation before we partake of the Lord's Supper. And, and we, we, Steve and I have talked about this, uh, both of us, uh, you know, like Saturday night, we talked about that when we came in and prayed today, all right? We uh, got right with the Lord. We made sure that we as leaders of the church confessed any known sin in our lives. I understand we're not perfect and nobody's perfect. But folks, uh, if you're waiting to be worthy of the Lord's Supper, you're probably not going to take of the Lord's Supper. Because in some ways, it shows some arrogance on your part. Folks, we are servants of God. We are sinners saved by grace. And so if we come to the table with our sins confessed, with us being right with God. I'm not talking about being perfect, all right? But we, we take the body, we, we take God, you know, Jesus' body and His blood, we take it too lightly sometimes. When I think of the cross and I think of what Jesus did for us, I think of the crown of thorns and the blood that was going down His face. I think of the spikes that was in his hands, and the spikes was in his legs, in, in his feet. I think of the blood that was shed for me. Folks, we need to be humble. We need to be servants. We need to be clean vessels as we partake of the Lord's Supper. Verse 28, now here's the key, folks. Listen to verse 28. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the the cup. And this is the time, even now, I hope you are in your mind asking yourself, is there something I have that's not surrendered to God? Is there an attitude I have that I need to get right with the Lord? Have I offended somebody or have I not forgiven somebody? All these are things but you examine yourself. It doesn't matter what the other person is doing. Right now, all that matters is your heart and your life and your relationship to Jesus Christ. Let us all examine ourselves. Verse 29, For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
And again, he is simply saying, folks, I am telling you, you are hurting your walk with Christ. You are hurting the cause of Christ if you do it unworthily. If you have known sin and you just said, I'm going to take it anyway, folks, that is a form of rebellion. And again, I, I want to emphasize, we are all sinners. But we can confess our sin. We can come to the table, not perfect, but listen to me, forgiven. Forgiven. Folks, even, even in my life, I, I, I mean, I haven't, you know, in my life at times, didn't even know I offended somebody. And there's been a few times in my life where someone would come down and they would say something to me and I had no key clue whatsoever. I'd said something that offended them. And at that time when they came down, I always apologized to them. I always asked them to forgive me. And I asked them, are we good? Is everything good? And folks, I am asking you today as your pastor, if I have offended anyone in this business, business, in this church, if I have offended you in any way, please forgive me. Please. I, I mean that. I mean it. I don't want to offend anybody. My calling is to help people. My calling is to love people. My calling is to get people spiritually strong and disciple them. So please come to me. If, if not today, come to me privately. And I promise you, I'll make it right. That's how important I think the Lord's Supper is. That we are right first with God. First with God. Second with our family. And third with our fellow man. So he says that discern himself. And then verse 30 he tells you the reason. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Folks, I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. God brings judgment to those who will not get right. They're just rebellious. They're just saying, I don't have to do this. And folks, I'm telling you, he says sickness and weakness and sleep is death. Even death comes to some. Then verse 30, 31, this is so important. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Folks, what does Matthew chapter 7, 1? Judge not, lest ye be judged. We as Christians have no right to judge someone else's sin. Folks, that's the Holy Spirit's job to convict them. That is that person's job to respond to conviction. I am not the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God and the Word of God that convicts us. So don't wait for somebody else to move. Don't wait. You do business with God today. Psalm 139. Go with me to Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Folks, if it's in there, if it's in there, God knows it. Okay? It's not just in your head, folks. It's in your heart. If it's in your heart, God knows it. Even if it's in your head, He, can, he knows what you think. He knows what you're thinking right now. Try me and know my anxieties. What do we worry over? Worries, a lot of times, over things that we can't control. Over situations. Over where, whether somebody likes me or not. Folks, I know God loves me, and that's really all that matters, to be honest with you. God loves me. Search me and try me, and see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting Folks, you can do business with God today. You can do business with God today during our time of invitation. Pray. Pray. Repent of your sin. Humble yourself before God and ask God to forgive you of any 
unconfessed sin. So we see an outward look, we see an inward look, and we see an upward look. Look at verse uh, 26. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, re- you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. The Lord's death. Folks, in remembrance of Me is what He's saying. And we have that upper look that hope that is in our life. Folks, we are Christians. We have a hope that the lost world doesn't have. We don't have a hope-so salvation. We have a no-so salvation. We know Jesus Christ is coming back for us. His Word tells us He is coming back for us. So that would, should be something that excites us greatly. That should be something that that just we look forward to in anticipation of Him. And I think I said it last week, folks. If you look at all the situations in this world, you look at everything that has happened, everything in Matthew chapter 24 has already come true. And I believe the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Wouldn't it be great if we could just all go out together? That would be an amazing thing. So we have an upward look remembering that Jesus is coming again. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 9. And when He, Jesus, had spoken these things, while they watched, He was taken up in a cloud and the cloud received him out of their sight. Folks, that's what's going to happen with us. I believe the rapture of the church, I believe this generation could easily see the rapture of the church. We'll be standing somewhere, all right? (laughs) I'm kind of hoping I'm on my motorcycle when that happens. (laughs) Wouldn't that be cool? That old bike will just keep on wheeling down the highway. And anybody can have it. You can have it, all right? And while, they, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparels and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go to heaven. Oh, folks, the greatest day of your life and I mean this when I say this, is the day you die. The day you die as a Christian to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the other one is the rapture of the church. It will be the greatest day of your life. We all go together. My friend, Jesus is coming soon. So as we look at the Lord's Supper as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. Are you ready to partake of the Lord's Supper? Or is there some kind of business that you need to do with the Lord or with someone? Our altars are going to be open. We still have time. If somebody needs to be saved, folks, this would be a great day to be saved to invite Jesus Christ into your life, to rededicate your life, to come for baptism, to come for church letter. We can get that done in our invitation time and still partake of the Lord's Supper. Father, thank You. Thank You for this day, God. Thank You for the example of the Lord's Supper that You put in the Word of God. And God, I'm so thankful that our church is not like the church at Corinth. And God, I pray for churches that are that way. God, it gets where you don't really even want to go to church. And my heart goes out for churches like that. And we lift them up in prayer. God, I thank you that you are here. I thank you that you love us. God, I thank you that you forgive us. And God, if there's one here that doesn't know you, God, I pray today 
would be their day of salvation. God, we give this invitation to you. Prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?